Haruna Yu is an ugly high schooler obsessed with Twitter meaning he consumes the wildest crap the internet has to offer. Are you serious? While begging an e-girl to set matching profile pictures with him, he meets a cute real girl with thick plot. With that, Yu decides to become a man worthy of dating her. On his way to get dinner, Yu tweets about moving to Tokyo. He stops to listen to an idol who has dropped a new song. As he is captivated by her voice, a blue-haired Karen with headphones crashes into him. Instead of apologizing, like a typical Karen, she blames him of taking pictures of her plot. She then grabs his phone and smashes it on the ground. Finally, she calls him a creep and smacks poor Yu in the face, making him kiss the ground. Karen picks up her fallen CDs and runs away while everyone nearby starts taking pictures of Yu. Meanwhile, he notices a CD that she didn't pick up. When Yu returns home, his sisters start teasing him for coming late. They have already seen his Twitter updates, so they know what happened. They wish he'd share as much with them as he does with strangers online. I bet many of you can relate to this loser. Maya, the oldest sister, thanks him for bringing the dinner and informs him that their parents have reached America safely. Yu and his younger sister Chitos used to live with their parents in the countryside until they transferred to America, leaving these two worthless children alone. The elder sisters, who already live in Tokyo, decided to rent a home to live with their little sibling. After dinner, while watching TV, Chitos and Hibiki get excited over Yu's childhood friend Hanashi Koyuki, who has now become a popular music idol. They start belittling Yu for being a phone addict and sore loser, while his childhood friend is a famous singer. Yu leaves after having enough of their crap. The next day, Yu visits his new school to submit the admission paperwork. Once he finishes doing the paperwork, he goes to the school's rooftop and starts taking pictures of the beautiful view. While at it, he turns around and sees the same Karen listening to music while imagining she's in an anime opening. Yu, struck by her beauty, couldn't resist taking her picture. However, the girl notices Yu creeping up on her and a typical anime plot reveal happens. While covering herself, she orders Yu to stop right there. She boldly jumps down, impressing Yu. She then requests Yu to give her his phone to check if he took any pictures, but Yu refuses, worrying that she might see his browsing history. She persists, and so does Yu. During their back and forth, Yu's phone slips out of his hands and falls into the bushes. Since it was a loner phone from the repair shop, Yu rushes down to find it. As Yu searches for his phone, the girl approaches and offers her help. However, she warns him that she will beat his worthless seat if she finds her pictures on his phone. Yu calls her a freaky girl, and both start looking. While searching, Yu suggests that they should try calling his phone, but she replies that she doesn't own a cell phone. Surprised, Yu calls her weird to which she explains that she prefers listening to music on CDs rather than owning a phone. Yu takes out the CD from his bag that she dropped that day, and while giving it back, he clears up the misunderstanding. The next day, while introducing himself to his new classmates, Yu notices the same girl among them. Both are shocked to see each other. However, when the teacher asks her if she knows him, she denies it. Later, while walking through the hallway, Yu hears some fuss outside. Curious, he goes to see what's happening and finds a guy forcing the girl into something. Initially, Yu ignores it like it's none of his business, but eventually goes to help her after hearing her voice again. Yu asks the guy to stop forcing her to date him if she doesn't want it. However, the guy clears up the misunderstanding and explains that he's just trying to recruit her into the track team club. Upon hearing this, Yu gets so embarrassed that he covers his face like a shy girl and starts mocking himself. However, the girl approaches him and returns his lost phone, saying that she has returned her favor of giving back her seat. Before leaving, she reveals her name to be Akitsuki Fuka. Later, on the roof, Yu is holding two movie tickets. Standing above, Fuka calls out his name and surprises him. She notices the tickets in their hands and asks him if both can watch the movie together, knowing that this worthless loner has no one to watch it with. When Yu agrees, she gets excited as the movie's theme song is covered by her favorite music artist, Koyuki. On the next day, while waiting in a long queue, Fuka suggests that she and Yu pretend to be a couple so they can receive the phone charms that are reserved for couples. Although Yu feels awkward about the idea, he agrees to it. As they attempt to hold hands, Yu's Riz energy causes him to struggle with it. This frustrates Fuka, who urges him to hold her hand properly. Finally, Yu gathers his courage and holds her hand properly. After the movie, Fuka is still buzzing with excitement and expresses her love for Koyuki's song. She then decides to give Yu one of the phone charms. However, Yu doesn't accept it, saying that they aren't a couple. To his surprise, Fuka responds by telling him that he can't be so sure. With that, Fuka thanks Yu for the date and leaves. At school, Yu notices Fuka crying in the hallway by the window. When she sees him, she quickly runs away. Curious, Yu goes to see what caught her attention and finds his classmate, Mikasa reading a book. During recess, Yu can't help but think that Fuka might like Mikasa. 
Meanwhile, Mikasa catches Yu staring and smiles back at him. Later, the homeroom teacher assigns the students who aren't participating in any club activities to clean the swimming pool. Coincidentally, these three loners end up together. While cleaning, Yu sees those two getting along. Later, Fuka comes to check up on Yu, but her foot slips, causing her plot to get wet. At this point, I think the Japanese school uniform is good for nothing but unwanted fan service and anime. Boring! Fuka calls Yu a creep again and runs off to get changed. After cleaning, Yu finally builds up the courage to ask Fuka if she likes Mikasa. However, Fuka confirms that they are just friends, and as she is speaking, Mikasa interrupts by saying that he is only interested in getting virus rather than unwanted children. After school, Yu confronts Fuka about her crying in the hallway. Fuka takes out a song CD from her bag and explains that the song she was listening to made her tear up, even though the lyrics are about love, an experience she never had, just like you guys. Furthermore, she confirms that she's confused about what she wants to do in the future. However, she thanks Yu for worrying about her. While listening to her favorite band, Koyuki receives a text from Yu that his whole family listens to her songs and mentions that even his friend cried while listening to her songs. At school, Fuka displays impressive athleticism, leaving Yu impressed. However, he considers it a waste because she isn't joining the track team. Standing beside him, Mikasa explains to Yu that Fuka is like a bird in a cage, and only he can open the cage and let her fly, just like he has seen the cage of her plot many times. Later, Fuka asks if he is free on Saturday, to which the lifeless loser says confirms. Later, Koyuki calls Yu to inform him that she's performing a concert at the Badaken, a famous venue where their childhood favorite band once performed. She invites Yu to come, but he says he's busy that day. Koyuki feels a bit sad but asks if she can still call him sometimes. When Yu agrees, Koyuki gets all blushing and excited, jumping on her bed and waving her feet in the air like a maiden in love. On Saturday, Fuka takes Yu to Koyuki's concert, surprising him. Fuka explains to Yu that she had planned to come here with her aunt, but she cancelled it, leaving Fuka no choice but to hang out with her last priority. In the dressing room, Koyuki is nervous about her concert. Her manager consoles her, saying people look up to her talents. However, Koyuki says she just turns memories of her childhood crush into her songs. On the other hand, Fuka had booked the first row tickets, so Koyuki noticed Yu right away. Koyuki performs her songs, leaving everyone happy. After the concert, while walking home, Fuka wishes to go to Koyuki's concert once again. She explains that Koyuki felt cheerful even though she was performing sad songs. At that moment, Fuka decides to sing. Suddenly, her voice changed from annoying little Karen to a beautiful adult singing voice, leaving Yu's mouth wider than the moment he saw her plot. Fuka confesses that her confusion fades away every time she sings. Yu compliments her voice and suggests she try singing as her career. While taking a bath, Fuka decides that she wants to pursue a music career. The next day, after school, she takes Yu to a shrine and asks him to pray for her wish to come true. At the shrine, they offer coins before praying, like it's a greedy capitalist company. After they finish praying, Yu asks Fuka about her wish. Feeling like an angel, Fuka confesses that she wants to sell her soul in the music industry. The day after, Fuka acts like a Karen again and forces Yu and Makina to join her in meeting the teacher without asking them first. She's all hyped about starting a band like Hedgehogs, and surprisingly, the teacher is on board with the idea. However, they need money to buy the necessary instruments, so the teacher suggests that they should work part-time in the beach house over the summer break. Everyone likes the idea, and off to the beach they go. While on the train, Yu tells Fuka that he's nervous about meeting strangers at the beach, unlike when he shares everything he does on the internet. However, Fuka doesn't seem to listen, as she's too busy enjoying the beautiful view of the ocean. Later, they arrive at the beach and meet the least favorite person of Yu, the beach house owner Yahagi Namiwaki. After noticing hesitation in Yu's voice, Hagi starts patting his shoulder as if that will make him quit his Twitter obsession. Bruh. While Yahagi is showing them their room, Makina spots some drums in a corner and questions Yahagi if he plays them. However, Yahagi replies that he hasn't played in a long time. The next day, their shift begins. Fuka deals with customers like a true bar girl and Mikasa attracts the ladies with his charms. But soon, they get disappointed after he tells them that he likes to be manhandled. Meanwhile, Yu is busy messing things up. He keeps getting the orders wrong and even manages to repel some customers away. Nabuaki shouts at him because Yu's voice is so twinkly that his ears can't hear his mumbling. Nabuaki takes him outside and tells him to put his crap together, or else he can go home. Yu sits outside, tweeting on Twitter about the mess he made at his job. Just as he decides to quit, Fuka appears from behind and reminds him about the time he saved her from Nachai, the spike-haired senior, and when he showed genuine concern for her. She calls this supposedly worthless loner cool because he puts effort into everything he does. 
Fuka expresses her desire to form a band with him because she sees his determination and effort. These words motivate Yu, and Fuka drags him back inside. Finally, Yu starts to put more effort into his work. Even Yahagi notices the change in him and compliments his improvement. Eventually, the day ends, and Yu's efforts pay off as he's finally resting on Fuka's plot. Koyuki is traveling to her next shooting location, and coincidentally, it's on the same beach. She asks her manager if she will have some spare time in the evening to which the manager tells her to rest assured. On the beach, Yu feels anxious about why Fuka cares about him, while Mikasa reminds him once more that Fuka is drawn to him. After saying that, Mikasa runs towards his date, a manly lifeguard who can save his twink-like body. Why are you gay? Emerging out of nowhere with little protection, Fuka holds a floating shark balloon. In the ocean, Yu finds it difficult to concentrate due to the distracting plot of Fuka. However, this leads them to get far into the ocean. When Fuka tries to change the balloon's direction, her leg gets crumpled, leading to her falling off the balloon and drowning. Acting on instinct, Yu dives in to catch her hand only to get nerfed himself. However, he gains consciousness soon and finds Fuka giving him CPR. Overwhelmed with emotions, Fuka hugs him and starts crying. Later, they both head back to the beach house. Nabuaki calls Yu out after seeing his dead eyes. When Fuka gets close to check up on Yu, he freaks out after seeing her lips, remembering her giving him CPR, and he apologizes. Later, Fuka asks for the juice that Mikasa is drinking. He tells her that it will be an indirect kiss if she drinks it, but Fuka says he doesn't mind it. This freaks out Yu even more, as he starts worrying that Fuka doesn't see him as a man. Don't worry bro. We don't see you as a man either. Daddy chill. Later, Yu is still getting worked up over what happened before. Fuka approaches him and requests him not to tell anyone what happened between them. When Yu mentions CPR, Fuka freaks out, requesting him to keep his voice down. While blushing, she tells him that it matters to her because it was her first time kissing someone. Yu promises not to speak about it again. Before leaving, Fuka thanks him for trying to save her. When Fuka leaves, Yu's heart starts racing faster than the time his screenshots got leaked on Twitter. Later, Yu receives a text from Koyuki, asking him if he's free so they can meet and spend some time like they used to. Yu wastes no time and heads to the beach, even when it's raining. Koyuki expresses gratitude after seeing him. Both recollect their memories of their childhood, and they start playing with the fireworks that Koyuki brought with her. Later, Mikasa informs Fuka that Yu has gone out for a while. Concerned, Fuka says that she needs him for something and sets out to find him. Back to Koyuki and Yu, he admires how beautiful Koyuki has grown. As they are chatting, the wind blows strong and takes Koyuki's umbrella with it. She clings onto Yu, wanting to confess, but gets interrupted after Yu spots Fuka standing there. Fuka gets confused after seeing Koyuki with Yu and runs away. However, Koyuki holds Yu, wanting to stay longer by his side. Fuka makes it back to the beach house, soaking it all wet. She tells Mikasa that she underestimated the rain. Mikasa tells her to change before she catches a cold and when he asks about Yu, Fuka lies, saying that she didn't find him. Back at the beach, Koyuki apologizes to Yu for leaping onto him like that. She asks Yu if Fuka is the friend with whom Yu is starting a band, and Yu confirms it. Koyuki friend zones herself, saying that she must have given Fuka the wrong idea, and calls herself just a friend of Yu. The next day, Yu sits worried, and when Fuka arrives, he musters the courage to explain that Koyuki is just an old friend, aiming to clear up the misunderstanding. Initially, Fuka ignores him, but she asks why he didn't mention Koyuki before, despite having numerous chances. Nabiwaki, observing the situation from behind Yu, jokingly asks if it's just another teen drama. However, Yu remains silent, ignoring Nabiwaki. Fuka starts ignoring Yu every time he mentions her name, and Yu notices that she is just like herself with Mikasa. Later, Mikasa asks Fuka if something has happened between them. She replies that it's just a little fight. Yu, sitting alone at the beach, mistakes a stranger for Fuka. With that, he makes up his mind to put things together. He goes to Fuka and explains to her that Koyuki and he got reconnected after a long time on Twitter. He makes the situation worse after saying that he never mentioned Koyuki because he was worried that Fuka might tell everyone else. Fuka gets frustrated and leaves. The next morning, the teacher and the seniors from the school arrive at the beach house to check up on them. Even here, the spiky-haired guy tries to persuade Fuka to join the track team. However, Fuka tells him to shut it as she wants to make music and form a band like hedgehogs. After hearing this, the teacher starts blushing. When Fuka asks the reason, the teacher reveals that she and the seniors are members of hedgehogs, shocking everyone. Frustrated, Fuka wishes that the teacher had revealed it earlier, as she has so many questions to ask. Yu and Fuka, together, start getting excited and tell them how much of a big fan they are. However, as both are sharing this moment, Fuka gives Yu a cold stare and looks away. Mikasa and Nabiwaki get concerned. 
Fuka requests Nabuaki to teach her to make music. However, the spiky haired tries to be the main character and says that Fuka isn't cut for it. Yu defends Fuka, saying that her singing is good. He also doesn't forget to mention that her mouth smells good enough to be open, unlike him. They set up the stage to perform. Yu has full confidence in Fuka while Yahagi gives him a guitar and teaches him some basics for playing it. Mikasa takes Yu back into the beach house to confront him about his fight with Fuka. He questions Yu if he wants to make up with her. Yu confesses that he feels empty and lonely without Fuka. He mentions not enjoying anything when she's not around. This guy just doesn't want to make up with her, but also make out. However, Mikasa tells Yu that Fuka is listening to this conversation behind the doors, surprising Yu. Mikasa walks away, leaving Yu and Fuka alone. While blushing, Fuka comes out. Yu realizes that he has confessed too much. She apologizes and thanks him for stepping up for her. Later on, the band begins their performance and Fuka showcases her impressive talent. Her voice captures the attention of nearby NPCs and even reaches Koyuki, causing her to recall her old memories. When their performance comes to an end, the crowd begins cheering, and Yahagi comments that Fuka has great potential. Fuka gets excited and includes Yu, Mikasa, and even the spike-haired guy who was previously annoying in her new band. When their vacation ends, Yu returns home with some gifts for his sisters, and he finds Koyuki waiting for him. Koyuki tells him that she lives nearby, which surprises Yu. They go through an album of childhood pictures together, and as Yu looks at her second priority, he notices how beautiful Koyuki has become. As they look at a picture they took before Koyuki disappeared, Yu expresses regret that he never told her how much he liked her before. This makes both of them feel awkward. Koyuki decides to leave, making up an excuse that she has work to do. As she walks home, Koyuki is glad to realize that her feelings for Yu were not one-sided and tears up with emotion. As these three people walk down the hallway after the summer break, every girl there thinks that they are in a love triangle. Suddenly, Fuka playfully biff Yu from behind, reminding him that she is the man in this relationship. She asks what they are talking about to which Yu responds that they were just talking about their summer break on the beach. At this, Fuka starts blushing and remembers the moment when they kissed. In the cafeteria, Fuka is excited that the members of Hedgehogs are going to teach them how to play music. Mikasa asks about the musical instruments in the studio where they will practice. However, Fuka assures him that Hisashi will lend them the instruments in his studio. When they can't find a place to sit, Fuka sees a girl sitting alone and joins her. However, the girl looks at them with disgust, stands up, and leaves. Fuka is impressed by the girl's height and her looks, but Yu finds her scary. Later in the studio, Hisashi instructs the band to play a hedgehog's song so he can measure their skills. After playing for a bit, Hisashi becomes disappointed as he realizes that the band members have very little knowledge about playing instruments. However, their practice session is interrupted by two ugly NPCs, who inform Hisashi that they have had enough of one of the band members. Feeling disappointed, Hisashi reveals to Fuka that the band member in question is his sister, Sarah, who struggles with communicating with others. Later, he takes the band to the room where his sister is practicing. Fuka is so impressed to see her play the bass that she wishes that she was her bass guitar. Hisashi tells the band that his sister is a skilled guitar player, but she has been kicked out of three bands due to her poor communication skills. Despite this, Fuka doesn't care and barges into the room, inviting her to join the band. However, Yu trips, deciding to be a farmer to check Sarah's plot. After enjoying for a moment, she smacks his face with her guitar. Yu seemingly doesn't regret it one bit, as he has played his role in the unnecessary fan service. To Fuka's surprise, Sarah agrees to join her band. Later, Yu feels uncomfortable as Sarah keeps staring at him while Hisashi is teaching him how to play the guitar. She tells him to give up on playing it as he doesn't know how to play it properly, and Hisashi tells her to stop discouraging Yu. After a while, the band decides to call it a day. Fuka suggests they should go to a restaurant to celebrate their first practice together. At the restaurant, Fuka tells the band that their first cover will be a song by Hedgehogs. Everyone agrees, but Sarah points out that playing bass guitar for their songs will be difficult. This causes Yu to feel insecure about his skills, and he even throws up his juice. Later, everyone except for Sarah and Yu leaves, leaving them in an awkward situation. Yu tries to start a conversation, but Sarah is not interested and continues using her phone. When Yu recommends leaving since they aren't ordering any food, Sarah suddenly decides to order some, making him stay longer. Yu feels stuck with Sarah's emotionless attitude for hours until he tweets about the events that happen. While chatting with someone on Twitter, Yu notices that Sarah takes a picture of her ice cream and later sees the same picture on the same person's Twitter profile. At this moment, they both realize that they have been talking to each other on Twitter the whole time. Suddenly, Sarah's personality completely changes, and she starts acting friendly and easy to deal with. 
They finally get kicked out of the restaurant while Sarah confesses that she was meaning to apologize to him the entire day. But since she sucks at communicating with others, she couldn't. Yu tells her that she's just like him. Sarah smiles, and Yu notices her cute looks when she does so. As they walk, Sarah continues to entertain him with her one-sided talks. Later in the night, everyone prepares and practices music in their own homes, especially Yu, since he isn't as good at clapping some bass as others. The next morning, Yu grabs his guitar and heads out to the studio. However, his little sister is surprised when she realizes that Yu is interacting with people in real life. On his way to the studio, Yu runs into Sarah, who compliments him on his cool guitar, and they both head towards the studio together. Unfortunately, when they arrive, all the studio rooms are already occupied. The spike-haired senior offers them the use of his garage for practice. While performing in the studio, Koyuki's ugly facial expressions make the producers cringe, so they close their eyes and consider covering her face instead of the songs. Furthermore, they notice that today, her voice is as ugly as her face. Her manager also appears to be concerned. Later, they send her off. In the car, Koyuki's manager cheers her up, saying that she has scheduled a plastic surgery operation. However, Koyuki seems to be lost in the thoughts of the day when Yu confessed his love. She feels like the same when she disappeared without telling him. In the flashback, Yu is scared to climb down the ladder. Koyuki calls him a crybaby, but he quickly descends after noticing an injury on her finger. Yu gives her a bandage to protect it against any possible infection. Koyuki thanks him, and later, Yu walks her home. However, Koyuki's smile disappears the moment she enters her household. Her mother suspects her husband of cheating on her, and Koyuki overhears their argument, causing her to cry in her bed. Turns out, Koyuki got her singing talent after hearing her parents do beatboxing every day. The following evening, Yu asks Koyuki if she wants to go home. Koyuki declines, saying that she wants to stay out for a while longer. She then asks Yu if he thinks it will snow this year. Yu replies that he is unsure, but suggests that when it does, they should make a snowman in an igloo. Koyuki is excited about the idea and begins to sing a song by Hedgehogs. Yu recognizes the song instantly and they both realize that it's their favorite band. Both promise that they should form a band like Hedgehogs together when they grow up. As they walk together, Koyuki appears to be happy because it's her birthday and her parents are taking her out. The next day, it snows and when Yu greets Koyuki, she ignores her and has tears in her eyes. She goes to the river and cries because her parents are getting a divorce and she and her mother will be moving to Tokyo. Later, Yu calls out her name and takes her to the place where he had made the snowman, just like they promised. Koyuki smiles when she sees that he kept his promise. Yu compliments her smile, but to his surprise, she starts crying. The day she disappeared, she expressed regret and said that she would become strong enough to smile forever. In the present, Koyuki is waiting for Yu outside his home with tickets to her upcoming concert in her hands. She rings the bell, but no one answers. As she waits outside, Yu suddenly appears, startling Koyuki. He invites her in and apologizes for no one being at home. Koyuki reassures him that it's okay and apologizes for showing up unexpectedly. She has some tea and decides to clear things up. First, she gives Yu the concert tickets and asks him to come. She then apologizes for not contacting him all this time since the day she left his home after that awkward situation. She confesses that she was afraid Yu started to hate her, so she didn't have the courage to message him. However, Yu admits that he had the same fear and that's why he didn't contact her either. To Yu's surprise, she gets angry and tells Yu that he should have made an effort. When Yu apologizes again, she says that she will only forgive him if he attends the concert. Yu agrees, and they move on from the matter. Later, while talking about the concert, Yu tells her that he is going to perform at the cultural festival. He tells her that he has formed a band with Fuka, making Koyuki jealous. As he talks about his band and Fuka, Koyuki decides to take her leave. Before saying his goodbyes, Yu confesses that he is glad to be friends with her again. Koyuki gets disappointed after getting friend-zoned again. However, she reminds him of the promise they made to perform on the same stage in their childhood. Both renew their promise and Koyuki leaves. However, one creeper takes a photo of Yu and Koyuki together and uploads it on the internet, spreading the rumors of the two dating. After their practice session, Fuka notices that their hard work is paying off. Mikasa and others are also happy over their significant improvement. As Nachai is preparing to wrap up, Yu surprises everyone by suggesting one more round of practice. Later, as they head home together, Fuka shares her excitement with Yu. She reveals that meeting Koyuki in person yesterday has made her an even bigger fan. Fuka calls Koyuki adorable and encourages Yu to give their best at the cultural festival. The following morning, as Yu is having wet dreams of anime girls, his sisters barge into the room. Yu asks them why they are making a fuss in the morning to which they show him his picture with Koyuki has been uploaded by a creepy stalker on Twitter. Moreover, the post is getting viral every second as they speak. 
His sister starts scolding him for acting without thinking. She reminds him that Koyuki is a famous celebrity, and her fans who idolize her won't take it lightly. Furthermore, she tells him that this is going to have a huge effect on both of their lives. When Yu enters his classroom, everyone stops what they're doing and surrounds him, questioning if he and Koyuki are dating. While Yu is having a hard time dealing with his classmates, Fuka doesn't say anything and gives him a cold stare. The teacher comes into the room, ordering them to take their seats as their class is about to begin. Meanwhile, Koyuki is busy getting lectured at by her manager. The manager tells her that the company has denied that the girl in the photo was her along with all of the rumors of Koyuki dating Yu. The manager reminds Koyuki that she can befriend anyone she wants but she should be careful, as her company influences many people around her. Later, Fuka starts acting like a freaky girl again, standing on top of the dangerous roof, listening to Koyuki's songs. Later, Yu arrives and tries to be normal with Fuka. He explains that he's having a hard time dealing with the people questioning him. However, Fuka doesn't give a crap about his yapping and asks him if he needs anything. Yu notices anger in her voice and apologizes for creating this mess before their big day. However, Fuka reveals that she isn't mad about that part. She gets frustrated while asking him why he didn't mention meeting Koyuki while she was talking about her. Yu tries to explain the situation, saying that Koyuki just dropped by his home to invite him to her upcoming concert. He admits to spending more time with Koyuki nowadays because it brings back the memories of his childhood. Fuka starts acting like she's over this fuss and tells Yu to not fight for now as they have a big performance tomorrow. Before leaving, Fuka shows some concern about Koyuki. On the TV, while addressing the rumors, Koyuki goes off script and announces that the girl in the photo was in fact her, and she just happened to be reuniting with her old friend. However, she shocks everyone by admitting that he was her love interest and that all the songs she wrote were about him and apologizes for upsetting her fans. While setting up the stage for their performance, the band members notice that Yu seems upset because of Koyuki's confession. Yu tells his bandmate that he had tweeted about performing live at the cultural festival and fears that some toxic fans might try to ruin it. However, Nachai encourages him by saying that it's irrelevant to their performance and motivates him to give his best. The other band members try to cheer him up by reminding him that the band is not involved in this matter and that he shouldn't let it affect his performance. Sarah comments that getting attention might be good for their band. Fuka explains to him that Koyuki hasn't done anything wrong and that no one has the right to judge her feelings. At night, Nachai gets nervous that he will ruin things on their big day and loses his mind. As Sarah is scrolling through tweets about Koyuki and Yu, she calls the situation awful because both of them haven't done anything wrong. Her brother comes in, and she confesses that for the first time, she feels like a member of a band. She tells her brother that she wants to protect Yu and his band members from the hate that they will receive from the audience during the cultural festival. However, Hisashi reveals to her that the audience had also thrown props and bottles at the hedgehogs. When asked how he managed to shut them up, he replied that all it took was to give his best. Sarah gets motivated and starts practicing. Meanwhile, Yu is feeling upset about the recent events with Koyuki. However, his older sister, Maya comes to his room and cheers him up by reminding him that even if the whole world turns against him, his sisters will always be there to support him. After hearing her words, Yu realizes that he has people who look up to him and friends who always encourage him in his low moments. Yu decides that he won't let the negative people at the concert influence him and makes up his mind to give everything he has in his concert. The following day, at the cultural festival, Koyuki, in disguise, visits Yu's school to see his first performance on stage. However, she immediately regrets confessing Yu being her love interest, as she observes people getting jealous of him. The crowd is getting ready to throw bottles at Yu, and some of them are even booing him before he steps onto the stage. Koyuki realizes her grave mistake after seeing the negative behavior of her toxic fans. Yu's sisters and seniors become worried that there might be a big commotion. They are concerned about whether Yu will be able to handle it. However, backstage, Yu has fully transformed into Erwin. He apologizes to his bandmates for all the trouble he has caused. Still, he admits he's happier than ever to be a part of the band. He confesses that he feels like the band can achieve anything it wants when they are together and explains he wouldn't have had the courage to do anything without them. However, amidst giving his low-level speech, he realizes that he's being cringe. While the others agree with him, they also confess that they feel the same. Fuka pokes his nose, telling him to pull his cheeks together and save them for the trouble later. Everyone puts out their hands and gets motivated to make the band a legend. As the band comes out of the closet, the crowd starts booing at them and demands an apology from Yu. Yahagi compliments their guts to show up on the stage, while the teacher visually seems worried. Suddenly, an ugly person throws a bottle at Yu and hits him on the head, causing him to bleed. Unfortunately, the bottle also breaks Yu's guitar. The ugly person prepares to throw another bottle, but Yu's sister intervenes and slaps him, telling him to stop. 
The crowd then surrounds Yu's sister, demanding an apology from Yu for banging their crush idol who doesn't even acknowledge her crappy fans. Suddenly, Koyuki removes her disguise and tells them to stop. She is shocked to realize that her fans are worse than K-pop stands, and they start to swarm around her like zombies. One of the Fatso fans starts streaming the chaos, and Koyuki's manager sees it and instructs the team to call the police. The lights go off, and when they come back on, the attention of everyone present shifts towards the band. They begin their performance by surprising everyone with their talent. As they continue to perform, the crowd stops booing and starts appreciating their skills. Even Koyuki compliments Fuka's voice. Hisashi notices that Yahagi has given Yu the Hedgehog's member's guitar. The crowd starts to notice how powerful Fuka voice is and how well the guitarists are performing. The teachers feel proud after seeing the band perform so well. However, Yahagi while noticing the band's mistakes looks at the crowd's sudden change in attitude. The crowd can't stop cheering as the band finishes their first song. Taking advantage of the situation, Fuka invites Koyuki to the stage and both sing in unison, leaving Yahagi surprised. After the song ends, the crowd goes wilder than the screams of American students at their national shooting day. Fuka thanks Koyuki for singing with her. Koyuki compliments Fuka's voice, making her happy. However, Koyuki takes the mic again and apologizes to everyone in the crowd. She takes the all blame on herself, saying that only she should face the consequences not innocent Yu and his family. One of the fans tells her that it's not her fault, and she deserves to like whoever she wants. Even the toxic fans root for her and she thanks everyone. Yu smiles at Koyuki after seeing her confidence. After their performance, everyone celebrates it at the restaurant. Sarah and Fuka call Yu cool just to complete the formality. The band members discuss what to name their band. Sarah and Mikasa propose they should name it The Fallen Moon, and everyone agrees. Later, Nachai notices that their music video got uploaded on the internet, and it received a good reach as well. Sarah says that it's probably because of Koyuki's influence. Yu adds that after the concert, the agency took Koyuki away, while she looked a bit sad. Everyone wonders if she's okay. Mikasa says that they can't be so sure as Koyuki is in a completely different position, and that she's on a whole other level. At the same time, Koyuki's manager tells her that the agency president scolded her for letting Koyuki act on her own. However, she lets it slide after Koyuki apologizes. She concludes the meeting, advising her not to interact with Yu for a while to cool things off, and warns her not to act like that ever again. The following day, at school, Nachai asks Yu if he ever made any contact with Koyuki, and he denies it. Sarah shows them the news of Koyuki's events getting cancelled one after another making Yu more concerned than ever. As Koyuki is scrolling through her schedule of cancelled events, she gets a call from Yu, but she decides to ignore it, making Yu concerned. In the studio, Koyuki and her band practice for the concert on Christmas. She recalls her fans rooting for her, and says that she will make sure to make it a good concert. However, because of the time she spends with Yu, her throat stops working, making her unable to sing. She tries singing once more, and with no surprise, her voice fails to come out. At the hospital, Koyuki's manager breaks the news that she won't be able to sing for a while, and they have to cancel her Christmas concert as well. Koyuki tells her that she can't afford to miss it. However, the manager tells her to take a break because she is overdoing herself. While waiting in the van, Koyuki stares at the Yu's missed calls. Two of her fans walk by, excited about her Christmas concert. Koyuki gets sad after hearing their conversation. Later, the manager brings her a drink. As Koyuki thanks her, she gets a call from Yu again, but she decides to ignore it like before. While Yu is lying on his bed, his little sister comes into his room and informs him of the bad news that Koyuki is on hiatus. Both get concerned about her well-being and Yu decides to call her. Fortunately, she picks up his call but cuts it after saying that she's fine. Yu gets fed with having to deal with both Fuka and Koyuki's bullcrap and finally decides to be the main character of this anime. He picks up his coat and follows his instincts. He gets on a train and remembers not doing anything for Koyuki when she was hurting inside during their childhood. As Koyuki is standing feeling all sad, Yu calls her name, surprising her. He expresses his concern after hearing the news of her hiatus. Koyuki reveals that her voice won't return and she has lost the ability to sing. She starts crying, apologizing to Yu for loving him. Yu finally mans up and hugs Koyuki to play with her feelings even more. As Yu waits for the Koyuki at the train station, she sneaks up from behind, rocking a robber's mask. Yu gets scared after taking her for a black man. Little does he know, she's wearing the mask to steal his cherry. Koyuki takes Yu for a walk around the town while telling him that she has been here before to shoot for a film. Sitting on a bench, she questions Yu if he is fine on a date like this. Honestly, this date is as dry as her crush's replies. Yu tells her that he is fine on a date like this, after all, this is all he can afford. After looking at her watch, Koyuki grabs Yu's hand and takes her to a nearby bell tower. 
she informs him that the bell rings four times a day. And if any couple hears the ring together, they will be connected forever. However, Yu doesn't buy her superstition crap. As the bell rings, Koyuki holds Yu's hand, making him blush like a girl. Later, as they are walking, Yu questions if her voice is back to normal. She confirms it and confesses that after being with him, she realized that she loves singing and her job after all. Yu wonders what it's like to feel that way. She replies that he will understand it after he becomes a professional artist. He questions her if it's possible for him to which Koyuki gets a little disappointed after hearing this and reminds him of the promise they made. She tells him that as long as he remembers it, he will surely become one. In a restaurant, both recommend each other different dishes to try. As they are enjoying their meal, Yu is surprised after noticing Koyuki's autograph printed on the wall. He tells her that he has never seen her autograph before. He explains that even though she is a famous music artist, to him, she will always be like his childhood friend. Koyuki says that she prefers to be it that way. She explains that when she's with him, she wants to be like his old self, just like how she was before becoming famous. She adds that in the past few months, things have turned that way because of him. Furthermore, she acknowledges her selfish behavior caused trouble for him and her manager, as well as for other people. She thanks him for always being there and hopes that they will be together forever. Later, Yu says decides to leave as he realizes that he is getting late for his practice. Koyuki thanks him for spending quality time with her and bids him goodbye. Later, as Yu arrives at the garage, he's out of breath, signaling that he did some cardio with Koyuki. Nachai catches on that he was on a date. However, to Yu's surprise, Fuka isn't mad at him. When he asks the reason, Fuka replies that it'd be a waste of time, as Nachai and Sarah have already taken out their frustration before. The band then starts their practice. Meanwhile, Mikasa seems to be concerned about Fuka. After their practice session, Fuka and Nachai excitedly inform Yu that Hisashi introduced them to his friend's live music club, meaning that they will start performing concerts with other bands. Nachai gets excited however Mikasa tells him to be careful, as he might accidentally run his hands on Nachai's muscular body, just like he does with his keyboard. Sarah raises the question if they will perform a hedgehog's cover or if they're going to compose their original song. Fuka asks everyone if they are free. She invites them to a restaurant, where she proposes that she will write an original song, shocking everyone. While discussing their new song, Yu receives a call from Koyuki. Stepping outside to answer, he tells her about Fuka writing her own song. Surprised, Koyuki cheers Fuka on. Yu then mentions that he's glad to hear Koyuki's doing well. Koyuki credits him for her current state of mind. However, their conversation gets interrupted by a saggy Karen who can't mind her own business. Fuka feels jealous, seeing Yu being all lovely dovey with Koyuki. Before entering the garage for the practice, Fuka makes sure that her feelings won't interfere with this session. She puts on a smile and announces to everyone that she has finished creating the melody for their song. When Nachai asks about the lyrics, Fuka responds that she hasn't been heard enough to unleash her inner poet. Mikasa says that he will create the sheet music for the melody and requests Sarah to handle the chords. The next day, after finishing their practice of the new melody created by Fuka, she gets extremely happy over how it turned out. Yu tells her that it came out great because she was the one to create it. When Mikasa asks about the lyrics, Fuka apologizes as she needs more time, disappointing everyone. However, they reassure her not to rush things and offer their support. Later, as they are walking home, Sarah tells Fuka that Hisashi complimented the melody that she created. Fuka gets happy to hear the Hedgehog's member compliment her work. Sarah also comments that Yu has changed into a completely different person. However, Fuka feels left out of the group as she is the one bottlenecking the band's performance. At this point, she's doing this for attention. Everyone gets concerned and tells her that they are waiting with high expectations for the lyrics. Later, while practicing for the original song, Yu receives a call from Koyuki. He eagerly tells her about the band's progress. However, when Yu mentions Fuka's name, Koyuki loses her energy to keep up the call. She makes an excuse and hangs up after asking if Yu is free tomorrow. In the bath, Fuka is thinking about writing the lyrics with Koyuki's method of conveying her one-sided feeling. As she's drowning in the thoughts, an ugly girl comes in and informs her that she got a call from someone named Hisashi. Hearing this leaves Fuka shocked, and she gets out of the bath with some meaningless fan service. The following morning, Hisashi lets Fuka meet his junior producer with a receding hairline. The producer gets straight to the point, unlike Mikasa. He tells her that he watched her perform at the cultural festival which made him stunned after hearing her voice. He mentions that she rivals Koyuki's talents and offers her to become a professional singer like her. However, Fuka denies his offer, saying that she won't leave her band member's side. The producer gets a little frustrated and tells Fuka to contact him if she changes her mind. Fuka gets up, assuring him that that won't be happening anytime soon. After saying this, Fuka takes her leave. However, her mind quickly changes after she witnesses Yu spending some time with Koyuki. 
Fuka sees Yu hanging out with Koyuki before their practice. She gets disheartened and runs away. Moments later, Yu arrives at the garage, running out of breath. Nachai, playfully, holds his head, asking if he was doing a cardio session with someone again. After their practice, Nachai asks Fuka if she has completed writing their original song. Fuka feels a bit uneasy and answers that she hasn't. Nachai replies, saying to do her best. However, Mikasa says that putting words like that will only put pressure on her. Sarah says to Nachai that his words don't make sense, and he's worst at being considerate of others. Yu notices Fuka feeling sad and offers her help with anything she wants. However, Fuka screams, saying to leave her alone. Everyone gets concerned, but Fuka tells them that she doesn't want to rush things. Later, at his home, while listening to Koyuki's songs, Yu's sister can't believe that Yu has such riz to pull a baddie like her. However, Maya says that saying this puts disrespect to Koyuki. However, Chidos replies that Yu's presence around her might be the ultimate disrespect. Either way, they feel relieved that Yu has changed a lot. Meanwhile, Yu feels uncomfortable while practicing after remembering Fuka's behavior towards him. He calls Fuka's home and explains the situation. He apologizes if he had been insensitive towards her and says not to push herself. Moments later, Koyuki calls Yu to inform him that she will come to watch them perform at the live music club. Yu says that he will do his best to impress her. She asks him about their song, and Yu replies that only the lyrics are remaining. Yu requests her help, asking about how she comes up with her lyrics. However, Koyuki says that her writing methods won't be much of a help as she has been conveying her feelings to her love interest, which is Yu. She apologizes for not being much of a help and hangs up the call. Fuka standing on the roof listens to her finished song. She tears up after realizing that she loves Yu. As she is listening, Yu calls out her name. She gets down and lets him hear the finished song. Yu gets amazed after listening to this and compliments her work. The other band members arrive at the scene. Nachai being the idiot he is interrupts and says he wants to hear the ASMR as well. However, Sarah cracks his toes and throws him away, saying to let Yu finish hearing this. Yu smiles and recommends starting practicing as soon as possible, and others agree. Fuka in her mind, tells him not to smile like that. On the big day of their performance, as Yu gets ready to leave home, his sisters assure him they will be there to cheer him on. Shidos can't resist asking if Koyuki will be in the audience too, causing Yu to blush. His sisters catch the hint and Yu leaves. Meanwhile, as Mikasa arrives at his home, his little sister greets him warmly. However, his dad demands he quit making music, or else he will disown him. Mikasa stands his ground and says that he will pursue making music as his career, as he can take on the whole crowd inside of him. His sister tries to stop him, warning him how this will affect his life. However, Mikasa tells her that it's the most important thing in his life and leaves for his performance like a chat. On the other hand, Hisashi tells Sarah to give her best. After she leaves, Hisashi notices how Sarah has adjusted herself in this band. Later, Yahagi enters the room with his homeless looks and takes him outside telling him that he has some visitors. Asashi is surprised to see his old Amo Hedgehog's members waiting outside. He gets angry at them for disappearing for six whole years. However, they quickly apologize and tell him that they have something to discuss. While crossing the road, Fuka's charm falls off her back. As she tries to pick up the charm, Truck Kun is on its way to give her a warm hug. Meanwhile, Mikasa enters the room. And after seeing him, everyone is relieved and waits for Fuka's arrival. It turns out Truck Kun has managed to fail us this time. The good-for-nothing ugly driver tells her to be careful and drives away. Fuka is shocked by what happened. She crosses the road without picking up the charm and goes about her way. When Fuka arrives at the studio, her mood is completely changed and she hypes everyone for their upcoming performance. On the stage, they start with a hedgehog song. As they perform, the hedgehog's members are surprised by how well they play. The teacher starts behaving like a drunkard and tells her that they are her students and she is proud of them. The guy with a receding hairline is also in the cheerful crowd to scout Fuka again. However, Koyuki joins the party after the second song starts and smiles after seeing Yu. Asashi reveals he wants this band to be together and likes them. The Amo dude notices Yu holding his guitar while Yahagi tells him that he lent him as the Amo dude left it to rot for six years. As their second song ends, Fuka reveals to the crowd that she's going to sing the last in their original song. The crowd gets excited as she starts singing. Koyuki understands the lyrics and gets that Fuka has written the lyrics based on her feelings for Yu. The crowd goes wild after hearing it and cheers them on. As the concert ends, Fuka thanks everyone for coming to listen to her rant. After the concert, Nachai excitedly announces to the others that the show was a massive success and they have even snagged another gig. Yu urges them to start preparing for their next performance right away. However, Fuka spoils the fun by dropping the bombshell that she's leaving the band to pursue a solo career, leaving everyone shocked. Nachai gets frustrated after hearing this and kicks the bucket of his used tissues. He requests Yu to convince Fuka to stay. 
However, Yu, with a heavy heart, explains that it's Fuka's decision and that he has no control over it. It's clearly written on Fuka's face that she's leaving because of her feelings for Yu. In his room, Yu sits on his bed feeling regretful, wishing he had stopped Fuka from leaving the band. On the other hand, the manager gives Fuka the contract papers and tells her to look over them and get her parents' approval. However, he still can't believe that she agreed to join after she previously denied his offer without any hesitation. He asks the reason but Fuka initially remains silent but tells him that she believes that she made the right choice. Meanwhile, Yu is sitting in the same spot as Fuka, reconsidering his choices. Right then, Koyuki calls him to check up on how he is doing. She informs that she will soon be filming a music video. Yu, with sadness in his voice, tells her to do her best. However, she notices that Yu isn't feeling like himself and tells him to take care of him. Later, Mikasa regroups the remaining band members. Nachai asks the reason for meeting up again. He mentions that the band can't continue as their vocalist has ditched them. He suggests looking for another vocalist for their band. However, Sarah comments that they can't replace Fuka because she has set a standard for them. He shows his regret and says that the band was a great escape from his mediocre performance in the track team club. He also mentions that the club coach has managed to get him a sports scholarship, and he will be busy with that from now on. When he looks at Yu, he gets mad and grabs his collar. He says if he had man up and convinced Fuka, this wouldn't have happened. Yu realizes his mistake. Nachai announces that he's done with the band and leaves. In the studio, the manager seems happy, watching Fuka record her song. When the recording finishes, he compliments her work and says that he has hit a jackpot while Fuka is hitting new lows. Sarah is forced to show some fan service that even I was waiting for. After she gets out of the shower, she finds her brother home. She asks if the hedgehogs are reuniting, and he confirms it. After getting his reply, Sarah feels sad about her band disbanding. Hisashi notices the obvious disappointment on her face. He tells her that one of the bands that come to his studio got their guitarist injured. Subsequently, they are looking for a new one for the time being. He offers her to join their band, knowing that she will reject it. However, to his surprise Sarah accepts it. He stands up in shock and reveals to her that he feels responsible for their band as he was the one who recommended Fuka to the manager. Sarah tells him that it's not his fault as Fuka decided to follow her dream on her own. Mikasa packs his things up to move back to his house. His sister, standing beside him reminds him that he is accepting defeat against his dad. However, he replies, saying that it doesn't matter as he never tried to convince his dad and he was only running away. Mikasa remains silent after his sister asks him about his dream of becoming a music artist. While Yu is busy being depressed, Koyuki surprises him and enters his room with gifts in her hand. She tells him that his concert was great and she missed spending time together. After hearing Yu's dry reply, she asks if something happened. Meanwhile, Yu's little sister wants to see if Koyuki and Yu are making some plot development. The other sisters tell her to calm her flatboard down. Back to our beloved couple, Yu explains the kind of situation his band is dealing with. He comments that Fuka's presence in the band made it feel alive and they can't find the rhythm without her. However, Koyuki replies that she doesn't give a crap and says that he can continue pursuing music without her. She reminds him of their promise again and tells him to have her as his partner on the stage. She confesses that she doesn't care about the world as long as he is with her. Koyuki reveals the talents that she has other than singing. She tries to make plot development and tries to use his mic hidden in his pockets for singing. However, Yu reminds her that she is in the wrong anime. He says sorry to her, making her tear up. With that, Koyuki breaks up with him after finding he loves Fuka more than her. She tells him to be honest with his feelings. Koyuki leaves his room and cries behind the door, saying goodbye. Later, Yu finds the matching charm that Fuka gave him. He makes up his mind and starts writing his song. His sister, who is constantly trying to make him a man of culture, enters his room. She's here to tell him to take a bath. However, she walks away after seeing determination in his eyes. The following morning, Yu wakes up after an all-night songwriting session. He heads to Nachai's house, hoping to convince him to rejoin the band. However, Nachai declines, saying that he has decided to focus on track from now on. Disappointed, Yu hands him the song he wrote and runs away. Later, Yu gives Mikasa a visit and hopes that he joins the band again. With no surprise, Mikasa tells him that he has now become his daddy's princess. He explains that his dad has settled a promising future for him and that he has given up on his dream. Yu acknowledges his argument. However, this desperate idiot still tries to mess up Mikasa's future again. He gives him the CD and urges him to reconsider if his mind ever changes again. As Sarah is walking with her new band members, Yu shows up. He takes her somewhere private and says the same thing. Sarah declines his offer too and thanks him and her ex-band members, saying that she's only getting along with her new band members thanks to them. Sarah expresses her intention of not joining the Fallen Moon again. 
quite ironic. Accepting her choice, Yu hands her the CD and confesses his intention to revive the fallen band. Next, Yu rings the doorbell of Fuka's home. However, she doesn't answer, standing by the door. Yu gets the hints that her parents are home, and leaves a copy of his song in her mailbox. Later, Yu standing on a bridge contemplates whether to hug the ground or hug his band members. Meanwhile, the other band members reconsider rejoining the band after hearing his song. Yu waits at the usual restaurant, hoping for his bandmate's arrival. As he is waiting, all of a sudden, he sees Sarah's reflection in the mirror. He tells her that he's glad that she came but moments after, he gets disappointed after Sarah asks where the other members are. However, Sarah confesses that Yu's feelings in his song were painfully clear in his song. To their surprise, Twink Mikasa shows up. He informs them that he left his home again as he can find another daddy for him pretty soon enough. Mikasa pulls out the music note sheets and informs Yu that he has prepared their song's music. As they are talking, Nachai appears who tells Yu that his song is as hot as Sarah's drums. Yu breaks the news that he has attempted to reach out to Fuka as well and that he is determined to reunite the fallen moon. Nachai tells them to practice for their next song without her for the time being. In Nachai's garage, everyone sweats while practicing and Mikasa likes their smell. After the practice, Yu meets Koyuki in a park. He apologizes for how things have turned but tells her that thanks to her, he was able to take the step of reuniting the band. However, Koyuki replies, saying that it's because he realized what's important to him. She stands up and reaches for Yu's hands, thanking him for making her life miserable. Later, Yu leaves Fuka's house and looks pretty upset. He looks at the sky and clenches his fist before walking away. Fuka is also sitting with her long face and her mother comes in to say that Yu has left. Fuka apologizes to her mom and the woman asks her again if this is what she really wants. Fuka happens to be fine with it, but the look on her face says otherwise. The band is rocking the drums and stringing the guitars in the garage. Nachai is pretty satisfied with all the work and Mikasa also believes that Yu's song is going to top the charts. Sarah tells Nachai to calm his Excalibur down because he went off rhythm twice. Nachai didn't know how to respond to being called out so he just blames the pathos. Mikasa finds the idiotic side of Nachai cute and thinks of both of them dueling with their swords. Nachai acts all edgy and hard but we all know he wants a taste of it. Sarah walks up to Yu as she has something to talk about. She tells him that her brother got a call from the club people, and they want Yu's band to perform there again. Yu asks the band members if it's possible for them to perform and they're not sure. All of them start looking at their instruments, and Yu suddenly promises them that he will bring Fuka back. The rest wouldn't have wanted anything more so they get very hyped up for the performance. Sarah plans to let her brother know too. Later at night, Yu calls Fuka's place. Fuka listens to Yu's yapping but doesn't respond, and Yu tells her that the band has gotten another gig in two weeks. He starts begging her to see him, but Fuka cuts off the call. Fuka's mother heard Yu's voice and popped her head into the room to get the tea. Fuka tells her that Yu called her again even though she had told him that she was going solo. She calls herself weird for that and her eyes tell how terrible she feels inside. She looks at Yu's song again and tells herself that she can't go back or anywhere near Yu. Her mom can see the sadness dropping from her shoulders as she leaves the house. It is almost sunset time now and Fuka, who is annoying as the vending machine with a stuck item, is at the studio to grab some soda. As she tries to insert the coin into the vending machine, it falls on the ground and another girl gets it for her. The girl was none other than Koyuki and they are women so obviously they're gonna get some talking done. Koyuki talks to Fuka about the hardships a solo artist faces at the start. Koyuki tells Fuka that she has broken up with Yu which is shocking to hear. Koyuki admits that she was so blindly in love with Yu that she couldn't see how he really felt. She then talks about the song Fuka performed not too long ago. Fuka keeps getting shocked. I hope she doesn't get electrocuted. Koyuki remembers Fuka's view on love but the song contradicted everything as it hits right in Koyuki's broken heart. Fuka gets really defensive all of a sudden, saying she can picture unreciprocated love because of her awesome imagination. Koyuki laughs at Fuka because she looks funny trying to deny having fallen in love. She tells her to be true to herself or else things will get even worse. After relieving her feelings, Koyuki feels a lot better and decides to leave. Yu leaves after the practice at night and Nachai asks Mikasa if he's visiting Fuka. Mikasa confirms that this dude has been seeing her every night. Nachai thinks it'd be better if they all visited Fuka but Mikasa tells him Yu is the only fit person for it. He and Sarah know something that Nachai doesn't. Sarah then picks up the guitar as she wants the band to be perfect by the time Fuka returns. Yu was out of luck that night and couldn't meet Fuka. Before leaving her house, he hands Fuka's mother something and makes his way back. Fuka and Yu crossed paths unknowingly with each other in their minds. Fuka finally returns home and hears her former band perform. As she watches the TV, the sadness rushes back to her and her mom mentions how Fuka lost her smile ever since she left the band. 
She knows Fuka doesn't want to leave the band so she advises her to do whatever her heart wants. Her mom tells her to fix things and not run away from them. She then hands her the letter you left for her. Fuka reads the letter up on the rooftop at night and how the hell she can read it in the dark. Anyways, Yu had previously asked her to sing the new song that he has written with all his heart for the fallen moon's sake. Fuka didn't listen and the band was about to leave the place because of that. Yu wouldn't let that happen so he decides to visit Fuka once again. Others support him in this decision and he rushes there. Yu faces some calamities while trying to find Fuka but a storming wind brings him to the school where Fuka might be. Fuka is shocked to find him there and not at his performance. Yu tells her that they can't perform without her but Fuka refuses to listen. Come on, it's not that deep. She thinks that everyone else will be mad at her for leaving. She deserves some whooping for being so dumb. Yu climbs the stairs and stands close to Fuka to finally tell her everything. Yu has finally realized that everything significant to him leads to Fuka as she's the person who gave him everything he loves. He finally confesses that he loves Fuka and hearing that turned her into a shade of red. Yu wants her to join the band again, as he can't find the motivation to play his guitar. These two finally confess their feelings to each other and it ends with a hug on the rooftop. Something none of you will experience. The other bandmates are impatiently waiting for the good news while those two idiots are warming up each other. Nachai is losing his mind when Yu returns with Fuka. Nachai is very relieved to see them back and Fuka apologized to everyone for leaving like that. Nachai tells her to keep the apologies for later because they have a performance ahead. Everything will go well as Fuka can sing Yu's new song easily. Nachai asks Fuka for the usual but this time, she wants Yu to serve so he does and they all get ready to create another legend. I hope it's not the legend of someone leaving the band again. Everyone is waiting for the infamous high school band, The Fallen Moon. Hedgehog is also waiting for The Fallen Moon to appear and Tama wants Yahagi to witness his kids fly. The performance finally begins and everyone is complimenting her. Koyuki is also busy thinking about Yu. Fuka's voice is dominating every other pleasant voice at the moment and everyone cheers as the song ends. Next up is The Fallen Moon's last song and Fuka talks about you and her mind. She also tells the audience to follow their hearts to find what's important to them, like her. Fair wind starts and I must say, it's a pretty cheerful song. Yu is grateful to Fuka for everything he has now. He decides to continue doing this forever and with that, the love story of these two goes on. The Fallen Moon made good progress and Hedgehog's fame never dried out either. Yu and Fuka go to a temple to pray on a sunny noon. Fuka asks Yu about his wish, and he responds with what she wants to hear, to be with her forever. Fuka is content with his wish and has no issue with it coming true. This was all about Yu and his experience of being in a love triangle. Will he be able to put up with Fuka? Comment fair wind and let us know. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more plot-filled recaps.